Well, I think, you know, Avid started, Corey, by digitizing the filmmaking process, taking film and converting it digital. Now that the whole process, all the way to consumption, is fully digitized, Avid has had an advantage because we're anchoring at the beginning. So we've tried to change with the times as the business model has changed, which is fairly significant. We've changed along with it, and along, uh, along the way, we've stayed in the lead position as a result. It was an exciting night last night. Um, yeah, it always is. Fancy clothes and everything. Uh, uh, so when, but talk about how those movies were made differently than movies that would have seen five or ten years ago. Oh, the business model, first of all, Corey, has changed dramatically. Not only how you create content today, but how you optimize it, how you monetize it has changed significantly. A lot more collaboration. Take somebody like the, the Grand Budapest Hotel, wonderful winners last night. You know, Wes Anderson had to shoot that all over the world, primarily in London, Germany, and here in L.A., using cloud-based collaboration for editing, for distribution, for marking the content, for rights management. Really incredible technical uh, you know, accomplishment. That's one example. Birdman, I'm here in Mexico City the day after the Oscars. They're so happy for Alejandro here. Think about the complexity of that movie. If hopefully you've seen it. If you don't, you'll notice it looks like it's one take, one continuous film, but in fact, it was shot over multiple tracks and they give the illusion as though it were one story. And that's the kind of thing that's happening with media technology today. So let's, let's back up a little bit and talk about the cloud and talk about sort of how that, that process is very different. What's happening right now with the content as it's being shot? We, are, we know what a movie set looks like. We know what the director's like shooting that stuff. And, and then the stuff comes out of the can or comes off the camera in a digital format. And then what happens to the content then? Yeah, well, that's the interesting thing. And that's probably the most significant change in the actual business model of movie making. It's what happens after marking it, tagging it, protecting it, making it available through multiple distribution channels globally, easily, with la multiple languages, et cetera, is how the business model has changed fairly significantly. So the digitization of the file record coming off a camera all the way to your consumption on an iPad or iPhone, on, on Internet or Skype, here, I'm, I'm looking at here, wherever you have the rights to, the business model has really changed. It's causing media companies to change, rethink how they cut movies, how they produce them, also who they hire and the technologies they deploy. So it's a really interesting time for media because of all these changes. Is the pace of finishing a movie faster because of this, because of this cloud-based technology? Oh, absolutely. I think about, uh, you know, let's think about Tom Cross, who did uh, Whiplash for Best Film Editing last night. They wanted to get that show out for Sundance because it's a more of an indie-esque type film. They actually finished production and one week later were able to demonstrate that film at Sundance. That simply wasn't possible before in the traditional model. The fact that it's fully digitized and you have software like ours that expands that camera sequence and allows you to manipulate it quickly and do all the rest of the business components concurrently is really what movie making is all about today. And it's really exciting. You still know those creative yeah. professionals to carry the day. I, and I wonder, you know, uh, in terms of sort of the map where the people are who are working in a film, that it changes both how quickly you can work, in other words, you can work around the clock, but also this notion of what you pay people, whether they're in Los Angeles or London or in Berlin, that you can maybe find cheaper people than you have to be stuck with in Hollywood, even though they're in New York, even though they're the, they may be the best, but they're also the highest paid. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I would say that, first of all, you can optimize your cost structure through uh, labor arbitrage, but also it's more the, the savings on travel. So if you can attract the best anywhere in the world who happen to be in Germany or Mexico or, or l wherever it might be, the fact that you can work collaboratively as though you're next to each other in a common session, still protect the file, secure the file, and all the other components, that's really the key. And yes, there's also potential cost savings, but I think the cost savings is mainly you don't have to fly everybody around anymore and you don't have to do as much on on in location because the technology allows you to add so much to the richness of the story when you look across all the other companies in Silicon Valley companies that cover here in Bloomberg West so much are there particular innovations that you've been able to borrow for your business that are that are happening with other software companies other technology companies uh, for example you know software as a service billing by the seat and so on it's amazing, by the way. I love your, your uh, location there. I live right down the street there. I'm just never there in San Francisco. But and you, we got to get you from Mexico? You're all the way in exactly. Mexico. You can't come up this street. Next time, come up this street. But please, tell us, uh, uh, you know, when you look at Silicon Valley, where do you see the innovation that you're trying to steal those great ideas for your company? 
Yeah, I think what it is is, you know, Avid was born and raised in media. So what we try and do is look for the very latest cutting edge technologies. One of the reasons I'm there in Silicon Valley myself, and we have major offices in Silicon Valley as well as we're in 140 different countries around the world. But we have to adopt those in a media savvy way. Security more recently is a good example. There's a lot of great security uh, technologies, but we have to adapt it to the needs of the media industry specifically. And of course, after what's happened with Sony, that's front and center on a lot of our clients' uh, you know, strategies today.